Way back in 2018, I conducted my first ever interview of a Pantheon Rise of the Fallen developer. That dev was Corey Sethos Lefevre, and he was the designer behind Pantheon's crafting and gathering systems. Which is funny to me because I'm usually not a big crafter in MMOs, but there were enough things that Pantheon was doing differently with their crafting and gathering systems that I was at least intrigued. Well, Corey left Visionary Realms in 2019, and in 2020, David Nefel Beach joined as the new crafting designer. David actually started off as just another fan of the game. He's been a crafter in pretty much every MMO out there, and used to run a fan site called Pantheon Crafters. So he picked up where Corey left off and continued fleshing out the designs. For a long time, those designs were just concepts and ideas, so I've never done a comprehensive breakdown of them because designs are always apt to change, and judging by my 2018 interview, it looks like they have since then. But at this point, crafting and gathering are being implemented into the game, and it seems like they're far enough along that we can get a solid idea of what it's like today and how it's evolved from those original plans. This is the first video in a two-part series about crafting and gathering in Pantheon. In this video, we'll start by taking a look at gathering, because before you can craft anything, you've got to have the proper ingredients. As usual, I like to start by finding out what the overarching goals of a system are, so that as we go through the details, we can determine if they support those goals. And in Pantheon, there are three main pillars that support the crafting and gathering systems as a whole. First is that we really want it to be a fully integrated part of the game, and that what that means is that just like adventuring, it should be fun and engaging to do, but that also it should be meaningful and it should have value not just for you personally, but for other players that you interact with. Um, so a very key component of our crafting system is around creating that social value to where, you know, because you are a crafter, the things that you're doing are things that, that really feel very meaningful. It's not just a side game that you pursue on your own, but it's something that, um, that other people will support you and uh, in doing and that, um, you know, ideally will benefit them as well as yourself. Um, the second uh, design goal is that we want our economy to be healthy over the long term and we want crafted items to have value over the long term. Um, in many games, crafting suffers not because the system itself is bad, but because there are economic issues that just make it not worthwhile or fun to do. Uh, so we're really starting from the ground up to make sure that uh, you know, if you decide to pick up crafting and you decide to do this activity in our game, that it's going to continue to be meaningful and viable for you. It's not going to lose its value um, over time, you know, or you, um, you know, for something that nobody really cares about. We, we want people to care about it. Uh, third and finally for goals, uh, we really want to make sure that the overall experience of crafting is more about engaging with the world and less about just grinding out stuff. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, as a crafter, you will create a lot of items, but you know we want you to get out in the world. We want you to explore. We want you to discover, to find things, um, and to be excited by that. Um, it, crafting should be more than just sitting in town all the time, you know, hammering out item after item after item. There should be more to it than that. Now that we've got that established, let's get gathering. There are five different gathering skills in Pantheon. Mining, wood cutting, harvesting, skinning, and fishing, all of which require proper tools. Mining, of course, requires a pickaxe, which would be used on mining nodes. Woodcutting requires an axe to be used on tree nodes. Harvesting requires a sickle to be used on plant nodes. Skinning requires a skinning knife, but is used on the corpses of NPCs rather than traditional nodes. And lastly, fishing, of course, requires a fishing pole and can be used on any body of water, which I guess you could think of as a big wet node? <laughs> For mining, wood cutting, and harvesting, however, the node locations won't be so predictable. Our gathering nodes do not respawn in the same locations or patterns every time. Uh, so as an example, um, in the area directly around the, the village in the Thronefast region, there are roughly 150 places where mining nodes can spawn, and there's only going to be a small number of those that are actually spawned at any given time. Um, when you mine one of those, 
the next respawn point is going to be chosen randomly from the other locations in the vicinity. Um, so, you know, it might be ahead of you, it might be behind you, it might be off to the side, it might be up on top of something that you have to climb. The other thing that we do when we place these spawn points is we actually intentionally place them so that you have to be looking for them. You're not going to find one just out in the open or by the side of the road. Um, or that's going to be a, a fairly rare occurrence. Instead, it's going to be tucked around the corner um, or maybe hiding in the shadow of the rock or something like that. Gathering skills level up as you use them, and there will be specializations available for each of them as you advance. But most nodes won't have hard level requirements. That means that even at level one, you can attempt to gather from a node that produces rare materials used to craft powerful items. But your skill level and the quality of tool you have will dramatically affect the rate at which you collect those materials. On top of that, your output will also be determined by what gathering techniques you've learned and use. You might learn a technique that you can use that will cause you to gather faster, but it will drain your endurance. Um, and there's a, there's a lot more we could say about why that is for gathering, but uh, the thing to, thing to understand is that it's it's more about giving the player different options so they can choose something that's more appropriate to their situation or, uh, or change up that interaction in a way that helps them. Um, but there will always, almost always be a trade-off involved in making that choice. Whenever you're gathering from a node, there's a small chance that you might get a rare ingredient in addition to the basic ingredient you're after. With Pantheon's day-night cycle recently being integrated, some gathering nodes can only be found during certain times of day. Others will only appear in certain climates. So between that and the semi-randomized node locations, maximizing your ingredients per hour isn't simply a matter of running the same predetermined loop of nodes over and over and over again. It's also worth noting that every gathering skill will produce something that is useful to every crafting profession, which we'll get into more in the next video. But if you're a blacksmith, for example, you might not want to only level up your mining skill, because sometimes you'll need ingredients from skinning, woodcutting, harvesting, or even fishing. Although I'm having a hard time imagining how that would work, like fish, swords, swordfish? Anyway, there are also other non-gathering ways of acquiring ingredients. At its most basic level, salvaging is going to let you break down unwanted items for a chance to get some of their materials or components that you can reuse. But salvaging is not to be confused with another similar sounding but very different method of collecting ingredients called scavenging. Well, scavenging isn't based on nodes at all, and instead it's literally just finding stuff in the world. Um, so you, you know, you're going through the bandit camp and you find something on the table that you can pick up. That's scavenging. And lastly, of course, some ingredients can and will be looted from NPCs. Or you can go to a merchant. Merchants won't keep many ingredients in stock, and there will be very few ingredients that you have to buy from a merchant, but it's worth a look because you can dumpster dive in Pantheon. In other words, you'll be able to see and purchase items that other players have sold to that particular merchant. So if someone looted or gathered a rare ingredient and then sold it to the merchant that you're at, you can snatch it up. But if all else fails, you can always try to buy ingredients from other players because, well, this is a player-run economy after all. That's all you need to know to get started with Gathering and Pantheon. Now that we've got some ingredients, we'll look at how to turn them into useful items with the crafting system in the next video. Hit the subscribe button now so that you don't miss that video and all future videos when they're uploaded. If you've been watching my videos for a while now, you'll know that I never ask you to donate to Pantheon's crowdfunded development. Everyone has different financial situations and levels of risk tolerance, so what you do with your money is up to you. However, if you do make the decision to pledge or upgrade your pledge and my videos have in any way informed that decision, I'd appreciate it if you'd list me as a referral when you get your post-pledge survey. My account is bazgrimtv at gmail.com and that helps me to know that I'm covering the things that you want to know about. I will see you in part two of this series on crafting and gathering, but until then, my friends, stay curious and adventure on.